Lord willing and the creek don't rise, we are definitely in trouble because the creek is rising. Yikes. The system has four parts. The first is the uh, burner, which I already tested. The second part is the burner housing. The third part is the drip system. And the fourth part being the actual uh, heat dispersal unit or oven or stove or griddle or whatever you'd want to call it. And of course the exhaust that comes out of that. So four parts to this system. Today, we're going to be working on part number two, which is the burner housing. And I'm going to build that out of a propane, uh, a propane bottle that's a five gallon propane bottle. Stay tuned. Hey guys, hope you can hear me from over the rain. Next, I am going to pull this, this uh, fitting off of this propane tank and turn this propane tank into the bottom part of the stove. Now there's some there's some warnings that I need to I shouldn't slap it because it's, it's knocking the camera over right. And there's some warnings about cutting into a propane tank. Uh, first of all I don't care if you've got the whole thing open and it's been open for a couple of years just like this one has. Don't start cutting into it with a grinder or anything else. It still could have some residual gas in there and it could blow up. So my recommendation is, of course, is to remove this nozzle altogether and to be totally on the safe side. Fill the whole thing with water, dump the whole thing out, and you should be good to go at that point. But first of all, let's pull this, pull this valve off of here. Now, obviously, this has been open for a long time. Don't just start pulling this valve off without checking to make sure that this tank is empty. You know, open the valve, shake it if you hear anything sloshing around in there don't start opening up this valve because there'll be a lot of pressure under there that is my first warning uh, make sure you abide by that because that could cause some serious injury if not death <laughs> okay i want you're absolutely sure that there's no gas in it uh, best way i know how is uh it's either a couple of monkey wrenches if that doesn't work gently Tap this thing around. Until it starts spinning. If you hear a hissing noise, stop. <laughs> it's not empty yet. And maybe this valve is just broken. Oh, there's a hissing noise. Okay, time to stop. Looks like that valve is broken. This might also be a very good time to make sure that you're doing this outdoors. I didn't hear anything sloshing around in there and that valve was, has been open for, I don't know, a year or two. So the valve is obviously busted and there's still gas coming out. I didn't hear anything sloshing around, but that's just a good indication. Do this outside, you start hearing that hiss, stop turning that nozzle and just let it creep out as it will and uh, you probably be able to smell that uh, that that ingredient that they put in there to make the propane stink just leave it alone for a while until it stops hissing <laughs> all right so there really wasn't that much in there just a little bit of vapor but still it's always best to be cautious 
pull the guts of this out. Fill this tank up with water and I should be good to go to start cutting on it. All right, so this is all I did is I just put the pin uh, right on the end of this tape measure, measured it off at five inches, and I just drew a circle around, keeping the five inch mark right on this seam. They helped me draw this nice, this nice arc, circle, whatever, on the tank. That's where I'm gonna cut it, and then remove the top. So just a little water in there too. All right. All right, think, next thing to do, I think, is to uh, cut an opening that's gonna be the door. All right, so if I measure how tall my burner is, that's uh, eight inches. So this opening is going to have to be at least eight inches. And that is going to take up almost this whole flat surface here, if not all of it. If you're trying to figure out where the center is, just put your tape measure on one end. And I'm going to go ahead and mark a mark. Put it right in the center of that mark. I'm going to look at the other end of the tape measure. It's hovering right about... Uh, 11 and an eighth up to 11 and a quarter. The farthest away it is, 11 and a quarter right there. That's where I'm gonna make my other mark. All right, now these two marks should be directly opposite each other. And I should get a full open door if I cut lines down these, these two lines these two marks. All right, I'm gonna measure down an inch and a half from the top, and I'm gonna measure down uh, nine inches so that I have, well, maybe eight and a half. Eight and a half inches, so right at the right 10, 10 mark is where, come on, behave yourself. Fine. Right. Act the fool. Go ahead. All right, right there. Now this space in between here is eight and a half inches—a half inch more than what I really need. Before you go any further, of course, make a cut on the side here. And then what you want to do is you want to position your hinges and make sure that the hinges are lined up with one another. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to weld these on. Now you do this prior to removing this door so that everything is right in place where it should be when you weld these on, tax it in place and everything holds up nicely. All right, hinges are welded on, and I finished the cut. 
Let's just see if I went all the way through. There we go. The hinges are just a little bit tight because they were got they got heated up pretty good. So I'll just exercise this and uh, put a little WD-40 on them and they'll be just fine. All right, so here's the test. Oh yeah, nice. So obviously I'm gonna to have to remove these handles unless I keep one of them on there just as a handhold to, to set it in there like this. But then I'm gonna to have to cut out an extension on here. Uh, unless I wanna go through a whole bunch of extra work, I'm gonna end up just cutting these handles off. But it fits in there pretty dang good. And again, it will sit down even further than that so I can still put the brake pad in here, or the brake uh, rotor in here. So looking like it's pretty dang good so far. All right, just give you a little update. What I did is I welded these little tabs in here so that the, because the door really doesn't have anything to stop against. So I went ahead and welded those in there. And what I'm gonna do is put like a little metal strap across here so that I can kind of buckle it in and uh, it'll stay put. Um, the next thing I need to do is cut a square hole in the very bottom of that so that this will fit right inside of it. So here is the last part that I want to do. I wanted to get bigger ones than these, but these are the only ones that they had there at Home Depot at the time. But it's just a way to latch this door shut and get it as uh, into place and as, and as tight as I, can, as I can possibly get it. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, tack weld these on, and I think that will do it. And there you have it. A little bit of cleanup with the welds and that latches just fine. All right, guys, that'll do it for this episode. That is the burner housing. Um, next time we'll be doing the drip system. So you're not gonna wanna miss that. That is like the heart and beating chest of the, of the stove here. So don't miss it. Guys, I really appreciate you guys tuning in. I know that about one quarter of you, at least for the first 150 views or so, will press that like button. I so much appreciate it. At least a quarter of you. Come on guys, you can do it. Press that like button. 
And if you haven't subscribed yet, please go ahead and subscribe. That would be wonderful as well. We're uh, just this far away from a thousand subscribers. It is a wonderful thing. Thank you so very much for all those that have subscribed, liked, and commented in the past. And we really appreciate those that are coming in the future. Till next time, guys, I'm Dave Anderson signing out. You guys be safe and God bless.